God for you today is, as for me and my house. As for me and my house. Joshua chapter 24, verse number 14. Bible says that now therefore, after Joshua had explained all that God had done for Israel, giving them a rundown from Egypt all the way up to where they are now. Verse 14 says, now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods of your fathers. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for you yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers whom they served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in which land you dwell. But as for me. Somebody say, but as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Let's say it together. But as for me and my house, we, we will serve the Lord. One more time. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I choose the blessing. Hallelujah. I choose the blessing. He says that I lay before you and I present before you the gods of your fathers or Jehovah. And he says... Uh, Curses will come with the God of your fathers and the gods of the Amorites and the Jebusites and the Hittites, all of them. Um, but when you serve your God and you obey him and you, and, you, and you honor him in the land, you will eat the good of the land and the blessing of God will be upon you. I choose the blessing. Someone say, I choose the blessing. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will walk in the name of the Lord. As for me and my house, we will walk in the victory of God. The word of God simply for you today is that, you know what, in the moment you are fighting, in the moment where life is tossing you up and down, you can remain victorious. Hallelujah. You must and you will remain victorious even in the midst of the storm. Jesus was asleep in the boat, was he not? Completely at peace and asleep in the boat. So it doesn't matter what you are facing, you can still rest in the boat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some curses that, that some of us have to deal with. How many of you have, have had to deal with curses? Family curses, ancestral curses, curses from your neighbor's house, curses running around the place, loose curses, okay, all of those, right? And so we've, we've all had to deal with them. Um, but there's one thing that is clear, church. You are blessed and not cursed. Say, buddy, I am blessed and not cursed. See, I am so blessed, a curse would turn into a blessing for my sake. Hallelujah. I am so blessed. It doesn't matter what anybody does. It doesn't matter what you speak. Remember when, when, when uh, Balaam was, was cursing Israel. Or oh, he was told to curse. Oh, to, uh, not to curse, but to curse. <laughs> Same word. <laughs> Different meanings, eh? Curse, curse. Okay, okay so curse, right? Er, you are curse, right? He was told to curse Israel, uh, but he could not because those are a blessed people. I declare that over your life in the name of Jesus, that you are blessed and you cannot be cursed in the name of Jesus because of the blood of Jesus upon your life. You are an overcomer and you walk in that overcomer's anointing. So somebody can say whatever they want to say. You are going to walk in the victory of Almighty God. Somebody say amen. That must be your conviction. You must rest in that. You know, when it comes to uh, deliverance and, and casting out demons and, and, and spiritual warfare, there are different levels of authority. Amen. And you got to be careful not to jump into a battle that you are not equipped to handle. Hallelujah. Because certain things happen. Amen. And you, 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 now you start running the other way when, you, when they are supposed to run the other way. Hallelujah. And so you must understand the realm of authority. In the realm of power, you are now no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are an overcomer. When you are, when you are minding your own business, walking with God, Bible says, and they attack you in one way, they will flee in seven ways. So you don't have to worry about that. It is, it is, it is the place where there are some things that have caused us believers to stop. Someone say stop. Don't tell your neighbor, don't stop. Talk to your neighbor, look them in the eye and tell them, don't stop. Don't stop. Because we see the battle. 
we see the things that we have to deal with, how big they are. And so even in the moment, we are unable to walk in the victory of God. That must not be so. That is not so. Somebody say amen. And so now there may be some, um, some people may choose to partake of the gods of the Amorites, right? And the Hittites and do things that are not of God. But guess what? I do not have to partake in that. But as for me and my house, and so I may be dealing with some things that came down uh, from my father and from my mother's side and fighting them and having spiritual warfare. And, but, but, but guess what? It will not touch me. Now, there are some curses you can only break over yourself. Hallelujah. So like, huh? Yeah. Because if, if, Ben, use your, okay. I'll make myself the bad guy. So Ben and I are brothers, right? And, we, and, 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 and there is a curse in the family home, right? Ben has chosen to be free. Walking in authority. Broken it and walking on. If I choose to partake in it with the curse tab, it will still continue in my life. Would it affect him? Now, the burden that many of us are carrying is that you want to break the curse off of everybody. Even those who are unwilling to be free, you are chasing their demons for them. And so the battle becomes. I'm not getting anywhere. You, you have victory where you are right now, but you can't enjoy the victory that Christ has given you because you are busy about trying to deal with things that God has not assigned for you to deal with. And so you are worn out. You are worn out not because you have not won the victory. You are worn out because you have picked up side battles. Full-time vigilante. Spiritual vigilante. You always have a sword over to fight somebody's demon. Hallelujah. Hear me. We are not afraid of demons. But there are things you got to be very careful of. Now, if, I'm, if, if, if this is my land and there's a demon there, you got to go. I'm minding my own business and you come in my way. You got to go. But you must understand the spiritual protocol and spiritual authority and knowing when to engage. Sometimes God will tell you back off. I say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this, back off. Stay away. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. They may choose to serve idols. They may choose to be bound. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Somebody say Amen. I want you to get very personal about your family today. We are, we, there, 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 are, there are some things that, that you must refuse. Yes. Amen. But as for me and my house, as for, I am tired of seeing my brothers go through this, my sisters go through this, my husband go through this, my wife go through this. But as for me and my house, I have authority in my home. Yes, yes. So that I can enforce. Now stop trying to chase. Listen. I nearly put this, this post on Facebook because it is worthy of a post. <laughs> there are, it seems to me that my neighbors are looking for whose yard can look like a graveyard. <laughs> there is a serious competition going on to see whose, whose yard can look like a graveyard. I mean, every day you enter, you're like, there's a new, there's a cat with the red tongs. I mean, I'm like, Jesus! <laughs> Serious competition. Now, they are, now I thought it was Christmas lights. No, it's not Christmas lights. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and so, such a person who is in full mode to celebrate the dead. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I tell you, I, I, I deliver you. The guy wants to party with the devil. Hallelujah. One, 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 one teaching moment when it comes to deliverance. Before you do deliverance, before I do deliverance, the person must be willing. Okay? Casting a demon is easy. Maintaining your deliverance. If the person is not willing, the Bible says they come back how many times stronger? And so every time I do deliverance, I say, okay, uh, declare with me. In the name of Jesus, I renounce, I cancel, I refuse them, I no longer welcome them, I cancel them in the name of Jesus. And my next prayer is, Father, based on the confession of their mouth, 
now I have now I have been given permission to now stand in the situation and fight. Understand protocol. Somebody say amen. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will walk in the freedom of God. But as for me and my house, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Somebody say amen. amen. Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to this day appreciate that you have victory in Christ. Someone say, I have victory. I have victory. And, and, and <laughs> don't let other people's foolishness stop the joy of God in your life. Don't let somebody's disobedience make you throw away what God has done for you. You are dealing with, with, with a stubborn son, a stubborn child. And God has given you victory. But you cast away the victory because you are upset about what is not yet done. And so you, you, you can't say that, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord because, you know what, because of that one situation. You have been praying, seeking the face of God for a breakthrough. God has begun opening doors, but you are sad. You act like God hasn't done anything for you. You can't celebrate. And that even though things are not fully resolved, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me, I see God moving. But as for me, I am strengthened in the Lord. We are discouraged by what other people are not doing instead of rejoicing in what God has done. So you are fighting fiercely. You are butchering and you are cutting and you are chopping. And God is like, oh, so what I've done for you means Ingratitude is the way, it is, in, ingratitude will block the next gift. If I give you something and you're like, oh, is that all? Okay. You think I'm bringing something else to you? Mm, no, I'm not. But gratitude, they appreciate it, opens the door for the next gift. So what has God done for you that you have not celebrated and said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will rejoice in him because you have not seen everything done. You must learn, church. We must learn, even as we walk in this overcomers anointing, to maintain a state of peace in the midst of the storm. You must learn to be the same person when your family crazy. You must learn to maintain that boldness and that anointing. Don't fall for the craziness around you. If there's one person who must always be at peace, it is you. One person who is always in charge, it is you. And so though there may be Hittites and Amorites and Jebusites all around me, but ask for me. You must make that decision in your spirit because I see too many of you all over the place. All over the place. And can't focus hallelujah somebody say amen. amen say but as for me and my house we will serve the lord all right let's get a few examples here exodus exodus chapter 10 verse number 21 exodus 10 verse number 21 bible says that then the lord said to moses stretch out your hand toward heaven and that there may be darkness over the land of egypt Darkness which may even be felt. Darkness that you can cut with a knife. It's thick darkness. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from, the, from his place for three days. But guess what? But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Even though there was darkness in the land of Egypt, the people of Israel who were also in Egypt were exempt from the darkness. But as for me and my house, we will have light. But as for me and my house, we will be exempt from the craziness that's going on. But as for me and my house, we are exempt from every foolishness. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe it's Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah 60. Let's go there. Isaiah 60. 
Arise and shine for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. So even though darkness is covering the earth. The people of God are walking in light. See, that is how you overcome. You overcome. Even though there's foolishness around, you are walking in the light of God. Somebody say amen. An overcomer does not give up. An overcomer does not quit. Listen, as an overcomer, that means there's another battle to fight. Being an overcomer doesn't mean all the battles stop. Then, then, then you can retire as an overcomer because there's no more battle to fight. But when you are an overcomer, darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people. They may try and blanket the office. They may try and do whatever they are doing at the job. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me, people are celebrating Halloween this season. But as for me and my house, let me catch you celebrating Halloween. Oh, it is not, it is, if it's nothing, then don't worry about it, then, then don't, don't do it. If, if it's really, it's nothing, then don't do it. Church, symbols, invitations mean something. It is not just a costume. Stop inviting dead things. I, I shall live and not die. Happy Halloween. I shall live and not die. Happy, what, what, what are you saying? Do you want to live or do you want to die? And the devil is looking for room. He's looking for space. And listen, if, 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 <laughs> if, you are, if you are a demon and you are looking for a place to dwell, won't you go to the place that is expecting you? So don't. This, this one, I'm not asking for your opinion. I'm telling you, no. <laughs> no Halloween, nothing. Don't celebrate it. Actually, on that night, Rabataka, Sheta, Bra, Takaye. You should be shandering instead of entertaining them. But uh, I turn my light off all the time so they don't come. But maybe I should turn it on and then. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> Change them. <laughs> oh, man, they don't. They know. They know. Mm. It's, it's crazy. People of God. Instead of saying, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We say, but this is nothing. It is something, church. It is something. All those symbols, all those dark things, all those dead faces, all those skeletons. They are going to invite dead things. And you want to live. Hallelujah. Just raise your right hand. Put your left hand on your Bible. <laughs> I promise <laughs> this year and forever. Never to celebrate Halloween. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Seriously, we are trying to move forward and then we have Halloween bringing us 10 years back every single year. We don't have time for that. Amen. But darkness may cover the land. But as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. Things may be going wrong around everybody. Things may be dark for everybody. But because you are an overcomer, you will walk in the light of God. Somebody say amen. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Oh, I am an overcomer in the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer. You are an overcomer in the name of Jesus. Listen, some of us too are carrying other people's burdens too much. You are not Jesus. Are you Jesus? Then let them go to Jesus. Stop being a hero. Some of us want to be hero, and, uh, but they need me. No, they need Jesus. You are carrying other people's weight to the point that when God does something for you, you can't even see it. And you can't rejoice in the Lord because you are clouded by the weight of other people. I said, if, if, if Jesus can't help you, why are you coming to me? <laughs> Seriously, if the, great I am, if the great I am that I am cannot help, why are you coming to me? I am not God. He's able to help. So go to him. Refer people to who? To Jesus. I mean, serious here, church. Some of us are carrying weight. We are fighting battles. That is, it's, it's, it's like an argument. 
because, because Ben is mad at his friend, I must be mad as a friend. What kind of childish battling is that? Because you don't like him, no matter what I, because if I'm going to stay your friend, if you are really my friend, and then you will not be the friend of my enemy. Hey. <laughs> See that, that unnecessary weight that we carry. Let it go. Drop the weight right now. Say Jesus is the healer. Uh, Jesus is the one that makes the way. I surrender the person to Jesus. So that you can rejoice in the Lord always. So you can celebrate the things of God. So that you and your house can serve the Lord. Amen. Daniel. Daniel chapter 3 verse number 24. Daniel chapter 3 verse 24. Then... King Nebuchadnezzar uh, was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men down into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king, look, he answered, I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. Stay right there. And they are what? And they are what? In the midst of the storm, you can come out without pain. You can, you can come out without the bondages. You can come out. You can go into a battle and come out intact. Because you are preserved of God. They may put fire around you. They may throw you into the fire. Uh, but you will not be hurt. Actually, God will even turn that for your good. God will turn the situation that you are in and that is so painful and that is so hurtful. God will turn around and then lift you up. Hallelujah. But you must, you must rest in that. But as for me, those who say, but as for me and my friends, we will serve the Lord. Is that not what they said? That, oh great king, we will not bow down to you. Our God will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will still but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You can put fire around us. You can push us financially, emotionally, everywhere around us. You can do your worst. But as for me, hold your ground. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, no demon will come and play and play baseball, hockey in my house. In the name of Jesus. But as for me and my house. So there are battles that are bigger than us. That God will assign us to. God will say, pray for this person over there. God will say, intercede for this. That is an assignment of God. Until God assigns it, don't, don't be picking other people's fights. Somebody say, amen. amen. And whatever God has given you, you hold your ground. I'm speaking, I'm saying, receive God's word this morning. It's, it's when, when things are not smooth around you, many of us become what we are going through. You take the identity of, oh my God, everything is not well. Well, a few things are going okay, but everything is not well. So therefore, I shut down. But you are more than a conqueror. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All God has to do is do it one time. And I am confident that he will do it again. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Somebody say amen. And so these guys were put in the fire. They said, mm, okay. Actually, they were, they were actually dancing around and celebrating in there. Hallelujah. And may you dance upon your enemies in the name of Jesus. May you dance in the midst of the storm. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk, what? Through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Come on, would you rest in the Lord right now? 
Would you rest in the Lord right now? Would you rest in the Lord right now? Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. And so the, the, the size of your battle uh, does not determine who your God is. Your God is always victorious. So I may go through the fire, I will not be burned. Through the water, I will not be drowned. Hallelujah. Receive that in your spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. Somebody say amen. One more example. Let's go to the book of Acts. All the way to the front. Acts. Acts chapter 28. Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Acts chapter 28. You see, th thank you, Holy Spirit. Daniel even was thrown into a lion's den. But when he was thrown in, this, I believe, was, was what he said. But as for me, and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lions, do you want to join me serve my God? Shut them down. Shut them down. But as for you, but as for you, hold your peace. But as for you, hold your ground. But as for me and my house, we will not be disturbed. Put on your warrior spirit right now. But as for me and my house. But as for me and my house. But as for me. Other things I may not have control over. There are things that I don't have control over and that I cannot stop. But as for me and my house. As for me and my peace of mind. But as of me and my heart for God, but as for me and my service to God, but as for me and my worship, you won't touch that. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. And that is how you begin to impose things from, your, from the presence of God onto the situations around you. This doesn't move. All of a sudden, it starts overflow. Overflow. Then things begin to change. Don't allow your circumstances, the fire and the water to determine whether you are burnt or not. But as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. Acts 28 verse number 3. Acts chapter 20, 28 verse number 3. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, this was after the ship was wrecked, right? He was being delivered. To, uh, to Rome, and then the ship got wrecked, and then uh, they were brought to shore, and then they decided to make a fire to warm themselves. Verse 3, but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt, this man is a murderer, he must die. Whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. Verse 5, but he shook off the creature into the fire and did what? Church, get the revelation. Suffered no harm. Went to the fire, was not burned by it. Darkness in Egypt, they still had light. There is a distinguishing mark upon your life and that as a believer, you are not going through what the world is going through. And that the situations around you may be dire, but your peace. But you hold, but as for me and my house, I have the option of joining you in the craziness. I have the option of whining and complaining. I have the option of being discouraged and giving up, but I choose. But as for me and my house, we will stand upon the word of God. But as for me and my house, we will believe God. But as for me and my house, we will not be moved. You will smile easier when you start letting go of the battles that you are, you, you are not supposed to fight. One of the battles you, you are not supposed to fight is the will of man. <laughs> I don't know why he wouldn't just change. I don't know why, 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 she, why she wouldn't just change. You can't change the will of man. The heart of the king is in the hands. Is it in your hands? Whose hand is it? So you are fighting the battle. Oh God, manipulate. Oh God, chop it. I'll do this and I'll do that. You are fighting. You, 
you spend days scheming and plotting on how to affect something you have no control over. Instead of releasing the person to God, you are trying to see the right words. You are trying to hook them this way and then refer them from you said. So based on the current situation, you must. And they're like, I didn't say that. Like, ah. You're like, you know what? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Well, what do you do when I said you said it and the person said I didn't say it? How long would that argument go on? There are some battles you don't fight. You hold your peace. You hold your ground. You establish yourself in God. Somebody say amen. Because Bible says in this life you will have trouble. And so if you let your trouble be the very essence of everything you are, then you become trouble. Now I will start avoiding you. Hallelujah. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so, and so he shook off the snake without any harm. Doesn't Bible say that you will, you, will, you will drink deadly poison? Let's go there. Mark. Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. Church, take, take personal responsibility right now for your walk with God. Take, oh, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost, here at this church. Take personal responsibility for the state of your heart and the state of your mind. Hallelujah. Stop blaming your boss. If my boss was nicer, then I wouldn't be this upset. Really? The person has a degree in annoying people, has a degree in causing confusion, has a degree in torturing people. They were there before you came, they'll be there after you are gone, and you are depending on them. Hallelujah. Hold your ground. Establish your peace. Say, so, uh-uh, your foolishness will, like, like the <laughs> speed of death, your foolishness will pass. I'm not going to permit that in my life, in my mind, in my emotions. I am not going to allow that. Somebody say amen. And so you go to the fire, I will not be burned. Your boss comes and is talking nonsense. In your face, you are smiling. <laughs> Refuse it. Hallelujah. Because if you don't, and it goes in, then the whole, your whole day is ruined. You know, I was having a good day until my boss walked in. How many of us have said that? I was having a good day until I got this phone call. Yeah? Shut it down. But that's for me. And my house. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I was, I, was, I was about to worship when that crazy person called and tried to interfere. Guess what? I'm still going to worship. Actually, I must extend my worship. <laughs> but you maintain that peace. You maintain that authority. You maintain that place as an overcomer. Because if you don't, very soon you, you begin to say God has done nothing or you become overwhelmed by the situation. I want to be very, very practical now. Church, we are dealing with issues around us. We all got bills to pay. But listen, I told you one time, I was crying about my budget. It is not adding up. Input is not equal to output. Output is more than input. So there's a negative red. So I was crying. Right? I wiped my tears. It was late, so I went to bed. Then when I woke up and I came back, the bills were still there. Hey. And I was like, oh. So crying doesn't change this. I'm going to bed. The verse that changed my life, no one who by worrying, can add a strand of hair to their head. I can't do that. Stop worrying. Hallelujah. Don't let circumstances determine your state of mind. And people will try. People will try. People will try. It's your full-time job to attempt to bring you down. But as for me, 
We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up what? Serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The serpents may try to bite. There are some people around you, they are snakes. Mm -hmm. Change colors. They, they change... They change colors, they change faces, they slide and they move. But that doesn't change my stand. The fact that people are being slick around you shouldn't throw you into, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> really? Because people, people are always going to be slick. People are always going to try to take advantage of something or somebody. That you cannot change. Even poverty. Bible says that the poor you always have amongst you. And so if I cannot change that, what I have control over is my house. I am the temple of God. My body is the temple of God. My family is my home. That I have authority over. Many of us have not even taken care of the things in our home. And we are seriously in somebody's house. Try to resolve issues between people when your own house is on fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Busy bodies, eh? Busy around, healing the world. <laughs> but no one can come to your house. Declare, but ask for me. But ask for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Declare, I will keep my peace. I will not be moved. In the name of Jesus. This, will, this is what will take us higher, church. Take us to that next place where our prayer topic is not, oh God, change somebody. Yeah? <laughs> Lady, why, why are you laughing? The battle can be fierce, but I am exempt. Somebody say Amen. But as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. So I want, to, I want to charge you right now. What is the state of your house? What is the state of personally your house? And what is the state of your house? Are you taking dominion? Or have you left the house in a mess? Bed not made. Kitchen crazy floor not cleaned and you are seriously in somebody's house trying to paint their walls trying to fix the offense whilst your house is a mess I'm not saying don't help people I'm saying you have gotten too busy you've gotten too busy not taking care of the things in your home you have gotten too busy not, 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 not establishing righteousness in your home. But you have become a judge in somebody's home. This, 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 it's, 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 a, it's, it's a dangerous thing to be praised in the gates and not in your home. People who don't know you, hey, he's great. <laughs> She's amazing. And your, and your family is like, you don't know. <laughs> you, you don't know. That must not be hallelujah. In the spiritual sense, the same thing. You have authority. At that other places, you have to be invited in and permitted in. And then and, and I, I, told, I told one one husband once that, husband, you have, when you pray for your wife, God listens more than when I pray for your wife. Because that is your domain. I come in by your permission. So don't be depending on my prayer to change situations in your home. You open your mouth and pray. It's all about dominion, authority, access, protocol. Now, can I pray for you? I will pray for you. But the man, you, the wife, can pray for your husband more effectively than anybody, than any prayer line can. Can you please pray for my husband? And then you put the food down, then you go take pizza, then you do take food and you are eating. You want somebody else borrowed prayer 
to, it doesn't work like that. But as for me and my house, church, if there's one place that you can take dominion, if there's one place that you can make sure it's intact and walking with God, it is yourself and your family. That, that is your primary responsibility. God will assign you other people later. But right now, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Somebody say amen.